Hey, welcome back. Today I have a special topic I thought would be pretty fascinating to cover. Um, it's going to be talking about gaming and more specifically playing longer games like RPGs in your 30s. I think with video games, we come to a really interesting period of time. They're no longer that newfangled technology that people are kind of oblivious of, but they haven't really been around long enough for older people, especially like middle-aged people and on, to have grown up and played their entire lives with them. How do RPGs and longer games fit into your life in your 30s? As a 34-year-old, I really want to share my insight and what I'm kind of seeing from the people around me, both older and around the same age. Now, if you're like me, you probably have memories of like staying up all night playing video games with your best friend when you were a kid or a teenager. For me, it was N64 with friends, tons of Diddy Kong Racing, tons of Mario Party, some Mario Kart, and a lot of PS1 and PS2 RPGs by myself. Yes, I pretty much played the entire PS1 RPG library. I spent many nights by myself, or sometimes even with my best friend, playing a lot of these RPGs. Once you get into your 20s, life definitely gets hectic. Maybe you're going to school, maybe you're working. You probably don't have a ton of money, if you're anything like me anyway. But you're still kind of in that target age group for video games. It isn't really weird to be a gamer. You're still a cool kid. What about your 30s? Does it still kind of feel like you're in the club? Uh, for me, I'd say it mostly feels natural. There's a little bit of a wearing off, and we're going to discuss that here, but it mostly feels natural. I think luckily for people under about 40 years old, that's like very give or take a few years, and depending on where you grew up and kind of like what your family was like, but generally speaking, for people under 40 years old, I think video games have been a mostly accepted part of society. Like if you're 20, 30, 40, you probably can't remember a time when video games weren't a part of home entertainment. But if you're like 60, 70, you probably can. So I think they've gotten a little less stigmatized over time. I say this because I have multiple friends in my 40s, um, and a few of these people have told me that they faced a fair bit of stigma, especially when it comes to dating women. Like uh, when they're in their when they're in their forties, I guess this would have been like ten years ago, so they would have been in their thirties. But um, different time period, right? 10, 15 years ago, so they had a little bit of trouble, you know, saying that they like video games, that they bought video games, or especially that they played a fair amount of video games. Pretty much could be a red flag and a deal breaker for some of them. Now, of course, this isn't everybody. This is a very small sample size. But I haven't really experienced this in my time, and I don't really know anyone around my age that has. So I definitely think there's kind of a cultural divide here. That's pretty interesting. Now it's like, as long as you're not diehard and too crazy about it, you could definitely play video games in your 30s and your wife or husband or girlfriend or boyfriend or other people in your life. I don't know who they might be. Those people are probably going to be more accepting as long as you kind of play and manage to control your life. So is it still cool? That definitely is, as long as you manage your life. Like, I definitely know people that were playing 12 hours a day, could not manage it, and I'm sure that would be pretty much impossible to date anyone if you're in that boat. But as long as you manage it, keep, on, keep your professional life working, save money, definitely can be a very healthy part of your life in your 30s. So life in your 30s does look a little bit different. There's definitely a bigger focus on career for a lot of people. They've gone to college or they finished high school. They've done the entry level jobs. Maybe they're now working up the ladder a little bit. Um, you might also be starting a family. That could mean getting married or having kids. And you probably have a lot to think about when it comes to how to spend your money and your time. If you're lucky, you're at a point where you basically have the money to buy what you wanted as a kid. You know, you could probably buy a game a month and it's not going to be something that's going to break the bank. But at the same time, now you don't have time to play it. That's kind of the truth. So I didn't realize how lucky I was as a kid just being able to play like Pokemon Blue for like hours and hours on end for weeks and months and years and playing Suikoden 2, like literally being a completionist with like some of the RPGs and games I used to absolutely love. Like I'm never a completionist with games now. I just don't have the time. Um, so just being able to replay a lot of my favorite games was something that's not something I'm able to do now very often, so absolute treasure that I really miss. But when it comes to RPGs specifically, they take a lot of time. 
And there's just so many of them now. When I think about this, back in the day when you had a console, it meant you had a very special selection of games. Like going back to like the PS1. If you had a PS1, you had a lot of RPGs to choose from, but you were definitely missing some of the others that were on like the Sega Saturn, the Sega Dreamcast, the N64, and yada yada. You know, whatever console you chose, you had a slim selection of games. Compare that to now, or if you have something like a PS5, you have so many of the games that are also on the Switch, are also on the Xbox, are also on the PC. The libraries have gotten absolutely staggeringly large. I mean, dude, even as a kid, I don't think I could actually play all the PS, all the RPGs available on the PS4 or the Switch. It's just not possible. You need to choose much more carefully than you used to, especially when you're older. So while I got to play pretty much every PS1 RPG known to mankind, and I'm serious, I mean, throw me an RPG in the comments below if you want, I'm sure I played it. But now I've really not even scratched the surface with what's on the PS4 and 5 and the Switch. There's less time to play and you really need to choose carefully. Like, uh, I definitely play like a couple of the really acclaimed games. Like, I got to Persona 5. I'm really, really glad I beat that a few years ago. Play some of my favorite remasters and stuff. Like, I'm really looking forward to Front Mission first when that comes out. Got to play Final Fantasy IX again and do some of the side quests I couldn't complete as a kid. So I get around to playing RPGs, but I too choose them very carefully. There's a lot of them that I start, play a few hours, and just say, hey, I don't really think I can prioritize this as much as I want. The other factor is definitely time. There might still be a fair amount of time to play. I mean, yeah, you need to work and you need to sleep, but you do still have some extra time. However, you might be advancing your education, working extra hours, working on side projects, have a family to take, uh, take care of. Life doesn't really, isn't gonna treat you very well if you negate most of that stuff and just spend time playing games. That's just the reality of it. I wish I could play more, I'm sure you do too, but the reality of it is, you have to live life and take care of things in adults. Yes. One of the biggest things I'm starting to hear from more and more of my friends in my age group, which is generally like 30 to 35, that's where a lot of my friends sit now, they are either cutting back their gaming time or eliminating it completely. Some friends are cutting it back to save time for other stuff. Some of them just can't control their gaming time and they're getting to the point in their life where they want to do other things or just don't think it's healthy to be playing video games for like six hours a day. I definitely have to do admit that this feels kind of like a conundrum to me as well. I think this is an existential part of um, consuming media and that can be TV shows and movies as well. You know, I don't make games, I don't develop them. I'm not in that, I'm not necessarily in the gaming world. Like yes, I've written for a few websites, but you know, I don't work for a specific gaming company or anything. So for me, I just really love the hobby and getting to experience these amazing games and stories. So that's part of the reason why I made this channel is really to feel like I could give something back to the community rather than just consume. And that's not an attack. Like if you're someone that's like, I just want to play games an hour a day, I totally respect that. In some ways I wish I could too, and maybe I will eventually. And yeah, this channel is really just a labor of love for me. So if it ever grows into a really big channel, really awesome. But if it doesn't, then, you know, maybe I'll just eventually go back to just playing casually. Because I also love hiking. I study Chinese. I have a wife. So that only leaves me so much time to game. And how the hell can I play RPGs with what's left? I am a chronic person who likes to ask, like, how long games are. There's that website, howlongtobeat.com. Use that religiously. Um, but I also will Google it, too. And so I'll go on forums and see a bunch of people playing a game that's like maybe 30, 40 hours. Final Fantasy VII Remake's a good example. That was around that time of it. And I'll be like, hey, how long does it take to beat this? And people will be like, yeah, I beat that in five days. It won't take you long. And I'm like, oh, damn you. Damn you. I'm so jealous. I will never beat a 30-hour game in five days. Not unless someone pays me to do it. So yeah, in your 30s, unless you're very, very lucky, games are going to take you longer even short games. Like I was playing Resident Evil 2, I just made a video last week, definitely check that out. Uh, it took me a few weeks to get through uh, playing with both characters and experiencing just a little bit of the side content. And if I'm doing the math on that, that's about 15 or 16 hours in 18 or 18 or so days. Roughly 45 minutes a day. I didn't play every day. There's some days I played for two hours, some days I didn't play at all. But you're looking at about 45 minutes to an hour of gameplay a day. So somehow I beat Dragon Quest XI last winter, which was a 100 hour game. I was absolutely hooked, so I did make it kind of a priority. Um, I usually played for one to two hours a day, and that is what the max I can spend on weekdays. And after I beat it, I felt like 
such a sense of elation, sadness for having to say goodbye to those characters, and also just total burnout. Like, I haven't really been able to get into an RPG in the same way since. Like, I've played a few, but haven't really had that same experience. It definitely made me feel a little bit guilty. And, you know, I had this experience playing Persona 5 as well, also another 100-hour game. I don't play those kinds of long games that often, but in the last few years, I've definitely found myself asking, like, hey, is this the last one I'm going to get to play? Like, is this the last, like, super long RPG I'm ever going to be able to play in my entire life? Thought it might have been with Persona 5. Beat Dragon Quest XI. Maybe that is. I feel like probably at some point in my life I'm going to crank another one out there. But um, it's definitely becoming something that's way, way less common. And not even 100 hours. Also, like, if it's like 60, 70 hours, same deal. Like, that's going to be super hard for me to get through. So you definitely need to manage your expectations. And this is where the kind of gamer you are really matters. I'm the kind of person who plays the game mostly for the main story and the experience. If it's a game I really enjoy, I'll do the side contents. Not usually to completion, just kind of what I enjoy or that something that nets a really good reward. When I really like a game, I'll do everything, but that is pretty much never nowadays. It's not that I don't like the games, it's just, like I said, the time limits. However, the more fastidious you are about playing games, probably the less you'll finish, but also the more you might enjoy them. Like, I'm thinking about my friend that just bought Elden Ring. He is definitely someone who grew up a gamer, but his professional career is advancing pretty fast, and he definitely has less time. So he told me, he's like, yeah, I'm definitely getting Elden Ring, can't wait to play it, gonna play the crap out of it but probably not really playing anything else in 2022. Um, And after I beat it, probably not jumping to anything for a long time. I respect that, you know, like he's playing what he really loves, but he has no choice but to focus on other stuff. So for me, realistically, I can finish maybe two to three RPGs a year. And when I'm talking about RPGs, I'm saying like 30 to 50 hours, not like 100 hours. Like definitely cannot finish three 100 hour games. And that's also because I need breaks from RPGs as well. It's not the kind of gamer I am. I like playing RPGs, but usually when I finish one, I have kind of like little games I'll play. I'll go to a platformer or I'll go to like a shoot 'em up or something. And that's another thing is that as I get older, I definitely appreciate shorter games. Like I've really found Metroidvania games to be satisfying and they give me a casual game time with a bit more of a hardcore RPG experience. Really like that combination doesn't quite match RPGs except for the very best ones, but still really satisfying in its own way and less of a burden to play. I definitely think I can keep playing games, but RPGs are going to be something that are going to be played less and less, I think, as I get older. We'll see. I mean, I don't really know. Um, I'd really like to make this video in like 10 years, be like, oh, how do RPG playing RPGs in your 40s? And I'll probably gonna tell you guys like, hey, I played one RPG in the last four years and it was, you know, Golden Sun lost stage on the Game Boy Advance. It's not even a new one. Um, Hopefully not. It'd be really fun to follow up this video in another 10 years. So at the end of the day, how should we feel about this? Well, it's definitely bittersweet. You know, if there's definitely a period of time in my life, like if I wasn't playing a good RPG, it didn't really feel like I was living. I still played other genres, always loved, loved, loved platformers, Mega Man, Mario, all that stuff. But It definitely felt at that time period like, you know, RPGs, they were the Big Mac on the menu. They were the reason why you went to pick up your console. Now as I get older, I'm definitely realizing like when I have 30 minutes, I'm like, well, 30 minutes isn't really going to get me anywhere in triangle strategy, but it will get me somewhere in a shoot 'em up I can probably have one really good run. So, all right, guys, that's about it for today. I just thought this would be a fun topic to discuss. And I want to hear about you guys. You know, how do you guys feel about playing RPGs as you get older? If you're in your 30s or 40s or even older, how did you feel about playing longer games and RPGs in your 30s? Like, were you impacted? Could you still play? Did you have to select more? Were other people in your life receptive? Just be really awesome to share your experience. Look forward to chatting with you guys. All right, that's it for today. Game on. Catch you next time.